the third in our series of videos on the first fundamental theorem of calculus. This is video three. Um, and we're looking at the mechanics now using the definite integral. The uh, second video finished here. So the area of a region under a curve between interval uh, made by a through to b <coughs> for some continuous positive function f of x dx is um, given as follows and the notation is given as follows and we're going to see how that works okay and this assumes that you've watched the other videos and you've done a bit of the antiderivative or indefinite integral stuff so far and that there is one way of describing the fundamental theorem of calculus right there in that rectangle so I'm going to explain it by showing examples. First one here, um, this could be, this sort of question could be given to you as evaluate each of the following definite integrals, or it could be um, evaluate the region, find the region under the curve um, in this interval a through to b, based on the function f of x is given. Okay, so the main difference is that one is actually an area and one is just what's called a definite integral. The only difference really is that um, the area will say units squared. And if it's just a definite integral, the method is exactly the same, it's just that you don't need to write units squared, but the mechanics is the same. So we're given the uh, definite integral, or if we use the graph, the area, uh, under the curve for the function x squared and we've got to take the integral the definite integral between limits 2 and 3 which correspond here uh, for that function okay so what we do you might notice something familiar here we take we use the same process of the antiderivative we know that for a power term we raise the power by one so x squared will become x cubed so the two becomes a three and we divide through by that new power now notice how we've uh, dropped the dx now and we've dropped the summation symbol it's very important that you do that notice that there's no plus c all right there won't be a plus c because there's no uh, there's no uncertainty. All right, there's a definite answer. And previous uh, derivation of the fundamental theorem of calculus explained why there's no plus c. So we write the um, we write that integral, and we put the limits uh, the two and the three that were here. They're now written here. So lower limit at the bottom, upper limit at the top. Then it's just a case of substitution. So the 27 over 3 is when we substitute 3. So it's the upper limit minus the lower limit because remember we had f of b take f of a. And b is at the end of the interval and traditionally a is at the start of the interval. So 3 is at the end and 2 is at the start. And we have 3 cubed which is the 27 you see there over 3. 2 cubed all right, 2 to the power 3 is 8, you see that there, and that's over 3, and we get 6 and 1 third, and again, if it was an area, we'd say 6 and a third units squared. Okay, moving on to a slightly more difficult one. We have the integral uh, of 4 over 2x plus 1 or cubed dx between 1 and 2. In previous video, we've seen uh, this rule here, a linear function raised to a power follows that rule there. Um, on the next line too, if we uh, rewrite this uh, so that we have a power term there and um, using our index laws and we also have a, uh, we can put the constant k out the front, we can do that on the next line of the 4 there, so we have, and we can do that with definite integrals too, we're going to formalise that in a minute and we've got this here, we haven't even done any integrating yet have we, so like so. Now we're ready to process that. So it's going to be 4 outside of, we take the integral now. So following this rule here, we have a equals 2 and we have r equals negative 3. So we have negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And we have 2x plus 1. To the negative 2. 
between the limits of 1 and 2. We have another constant, so we can apply this rule again. We have another constant that we can take out the front. So this here, 1 over 2 times negative 2 is 1 over negative 4. And so we can times that on the front there. But we've got 4 and we've got 1 over negative 4, so that'll just be negative 1. And then we write the rest in. Like so. So upper limit minus lower limit. So it's going to be open brackets 2 times upper limit 2 times 2 plus 1. It's a negative 2. Minus, because it's f of b minus f of a, 2 times 1 plus 1 to negative 2. That negative one I'm just going to put as a negative on the front. So we have 4 plus 1 is 5. We have 5 to the negative 2. And we have, um, in the second set of brackets, we have 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 to the negative 2. So, brackets there too. I've applied the limits now. And the negative outside, remember your order of operations. Now it's 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. And 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. And we multiply all that by negative 1, which, we mean, which means we have a positive 1 ninth. We have a negative 1 25th. So we have a ninth take a 25th which is 16 over 225. If it was an area under a curve, you'd write units squared. If it's just a in de uh, definite integral, if it's just a definite integral, you don't write the units. I would take note of the following here. So um, these run harmoniously with the properties of indefinite integrals. So the properties of definite integrals, um, yeah, pretty pretty darned easy to see in a lot of cases but there's a couple of exceptions now if there's no difference between the um, ends of the interval it's a bit like what we saw in the previous video the area is zero or the definite integral is zero if we switch the limits around we actually get the negative uh, there'll be a bit more of that in another video then the negative area or the negative of the definite integral okay we saw this one here where we pull the constant out in the video this video you can um, the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals which is consistent with the indefinite integral property and an interesting one which will be in another video is you can split um, if if you've got an interval from A to C and then that joins directly on continuously from an interval to C to B that will make the interval A to B and we can integrate it in two stages provided a is less than c which is less than b and we'll look at that graphically okay i just want to demonstrate one one very quickly i'm going to just demonstrate the second one and remember this is really that first question on the video I just swapped around so all we've done is swap around the two and the three remember previously it had the three on the top and the two at the bottom and so we have x cubed over three this is an unusual one because the number on the top is smaller than the number on the bottom. We have uh, 8 over 3, take away 27 over 3. And that's the negative of what we had last time, isn't it? Which is this. Is, okay, we had negative 6 and a third, and early in the video we had positive 6 and 1 third. Okay, and there's our evidence. So we switch the uh, numbers of the interval around, gives us a negative result.